Good morning and uh, welcome to the Outback Power uh, webinar series. Uh, I am Bo McGlugan, Senior Product Manager. And in this uh, webinar series, we're going to be talking about uh, NEC 2017 uh, and rapid shutdown requirements. As of January 1st of this year, 27 states have adopted the 2017 edition of the National Electric Code and with it, Article 690.12, paragraph B2, which addresses PV array safety for firefighters. Uh, important to note that uh, California's adoption starts uh, in January of 2020. The biggest change in the 2017 edition is the requirement is the requirement for inside of the array uh, rapid shutdown. For many installers, the most effective way to meet the requirements is with a module level device to limit uh, voltage of conductors to less than 80 volts, 30 seconds after the shutdown initiation. In this webinar, we'll discuss solutions and meet this requirement that work with Outback Power products. Okay, so National Fire Protection uh, Code 70 uh, sets the foundation for uh, electrical safety in residential, commercial, industrial, industrial occupancies. Um, specifically, we uh, refer to the uh, National Electric Code, Article 690.12b, which addresses firefighter safety. And in this presentation, we'll talk about Outback Power Solutions and some code cycle differences between uh, 2014 as sort of a, a baseline and um, uh, a comparison to NEC 2017. Okay, so what are some of those code cycle differences? Well, in NEC 2014, uh, PV system circuits that were defined as on or in buildings, uh, any place that you were more than 10 feet of the array boundary, you had to have all conductors controlled to less than 30 volts and less than 240 volts AC in less than 10 seconds. And that left a lot of gaps and uncertainties. How do you define a, what a PV system circuit is? Where exactly does that end? Um, and then the original 10 second requirement conflicted with uh, right through requirements. So that was later changed to uh, 30 seconds. And NEC 2017 greatly improved on that um, with some other problems as well, but um, it narrowed the array boundary to one foot, which made a lot more sense. It introduced separate requirements for inside and outside of the array boundary uh, and said that outside of the array boundary, you must have less than 30 volts at all conductors uh, at 30 seconds after shutdown initiation. Uh, and then the problematic part is inside the array boundary, it gives one of three options. Uh, conformance, either having a listed rapid shutdown array, which is something that um, panel manufacturers may go to in the future. Performance, limiting voltage of conductors to less than 80 volts, which is what we all think of with respect to this you know, so-called module level requirement. And finally, construction. So you can also comply to NEC 2017 by having no exposed metal or conductors in or within eight feet of the array. So that's, that's a other potential solution. And then the array boundary requirements were deferred until just a few weeks ago. So what is Outback Power doing about this? In summary, we have products available for sale now that address NEC 2014, and then we're working with other companies to certify that their NEC 27 solutions work with our products. Okay. Outside of the array boundary control gives you compliance to uh, 2014 NEC, any, uh, 2014 of the National Electric Code cycle. Some of the products that are available for sale that offer Outback Power compliance with that include the ICS Plus Dash One and the Skybox Skybox RSD Dash One. Uh, this is required. Uh, in California, Arizona, Maryland, New York, Florida, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, et cetera, and many other states. 
and it's 27 states to date. Now, the inside and outside array monitor requirement uh, provided that it's required for compliance with NEC 2017. Products that are available for sale now that have been tested with Outback Power include uh, Tygo, which tested the FM80, and they are testing the FM100 and the Skybox. Uh, they are, we've also completed testing with the IMO Fire Raptor product. And Outback Power is actively working with other companies to test other solutions as well, because we want to make sure that uh, the installer community has as many good viable options uh, for complying with this regulation as possible. So on the right here, you see the map of current NEC 2017 uh, states. Uh, you'll notice that I flagged Arizona, Missouri, and Mississippi as states that require um, 2017 in some places, varies by municipality, and 2014 in others. And it's kind of a mishmash in each of those, those states as far as what's going to be required where. Okay, so 27, 2014 compliance, excuse me, with the ICS Plus. This is a charge controller based system diagram because the charge controller defines where the end of the array boundary is. Um, so you've got the array up on the roof. Within 10 feet of it, you have uh, a combiner box, which provides arc fault detection, overcurrent protection, a local disconnect up on the roof, and rapid shutdown, the ability to de-energize uh, any controlled conductor within the array. Uh, there's also a shutdown initiator component, and that's feeding signals into the um, charge controller, um, and then in a breaker or in a um, in a load center like the GSLC, for example, you've got a breaker control and a remote trip breaker. There's your overview of the components that you'd see in a, in a typical NEC 2014 uh, compliant install. And here's some examples of what that looks like. So here's a comparison of the FM80 to the FM100. Um, the FM80, for example, could have up to four strings coming into a combiner box. And then you've got a uh, relay here, breaker control, connected to the power supply and the initiator signal signals back up to the combiner box. Uh, with the FM100, you can simplify that quite a bit. You don't need any fuses. You don't need a remote trip breaker, uh, ground fault detection breaker control. So it's simpler. It's more cost effective. Um, and you can save in terms of components labor compared to the FM80. Here's an example with Skybox. You could, for example, have uh, three strings of seven coming into a Skybox RSD-1. And then that's coming into the Skybox uh, PV um, section of the boss or the load center underneath the Skybox. You would have a class two power supply uh, powering up the initiator and the rapid shutdown device. And that's communicating both the Skybox and the array up on the roof. And of course, the other way you could do that is with um, uh, two strings of, uh, of 10, for example, if you wanted to do that as well. So, Okay, what's changing for us um, with NEC 2017? Well, again, you've got products available for sale now, including the Tygo TS4-R-S or TS4-S, uh, the IMO Fire Raptor and others. So it's required uh, as of January 1st in markets such as Hawaii, Massachusetts, parts of Arizona, Vermont, Colorado, uh, Texas, Washington, et cetera. And then South Carolina is going to be requiring it as of July 1st of this year. California gets added July 1st of next year. And then Florida adds on in January 1st, a uh, year after that. Okay, here's some examples. Um, I put a Tygo TS-4-R 
dash R S and this particular example connected to with an FM 80, which is exactly how Tygo tested it. Um, so you see some changes between this and the NEC 2014 version where you've got a uh, CC or a CCA connected to the um, uh, Tygo communications device going out and sending the, the, the signal to the dash S's. Uh, with the uh, FM100, I chose to show a I am a fire raptor example, and there you see the the two strings with an I am a fire raptor uh, FRS-01 attached to each uh, module, and the communications loop from the I am a initiator. Uh, is made with any arbitrary um, IMO receiver in the array, and then that just continues on in a chain back through to the end. Okay, similarly with the Skybox. Um, with Skybox, Tygo is currently testing um, all of their um, products. The dash S testing is more or less complete. Uh, the dash F testing is ongoing. So here's an example of what this would look like with a dash S. And then on the right, uh, you've got an example of what this would look like um, with an IMO fire after type product. Again, the dash F testing hasn't been completed yet. Um, but if it works, you would have the um, signal generator on the negative leg of the PV connecting back up into the array um, and back to the panels. So you can get letters of compliance available from Tygo on their website at the link shown there on the, on the screen or at Outback Power. Um, our safety compliance part of our website includes the IMO uh, declaration that you see there on the right. Oops. Other rapid shutdown related activities that we're, that we're working on. Um, we're participating in UL 3741. That's the uh, PV hazard control um, standard. Uh, that we think will add some improvements over NEC 2017. And then, of course, we're also um, working on uh, 2020 version as well. So that's where we're at. With that, we'll uh, turn it over for questions. Um, Montana asks if we've heard if parts of California are requiring NEC 2017 compliance already. And yes, we've heard that. Um, we've been, you know, traveling and in California extensively, haven't seen it with our own eyes yet, but we've heard that there are some places that are, are performing NEC 2017 compliant installations and then writing off the exception to 2014 compliance. And that just doesn't make a lot of sense. It seems like it adds a lot of cost and expenses not necessary. Um, so I, I think that as we start seeing more and more people um, looking at the code compliant uh, code requirements and doing new installations, we'll see we'll see more of California uh, firmly adopting NEC 2014 or firmly uh, requiring and implementing 2014 installations. Brad asks if it's only two units, uh, the the IMO Fire Raptor. Can or sorry, excuse me. If there's only 12 units that the IMO Fire Raptor can support per initiator, and Brad, I've confirmed this with IMO. It's not 12. It's a total of 24 or 25 units that can be supported uh, per single initiator. Tom asks if we can do uh, battery backup and if we can have the inverter continue to work while the grid is down and still support rapid shutdown. And absolutely we can, Tom. What you're seeing here in, in all of the examples that we're presenting um, are 
with the rapid shutdown initiators and um, keep alive signals being powered off of a, a 48 volt battery. So in that case, they would continue to to operate uh, during the transition from a grid outage um, to going off grid. And of course, they'd you know run run for the duration of the outage for as long as that battery was alive. So there are other ways to connect it, but you know it certainly works to have it run off of the battery. Brad asks if we've done any testing with the Midnight LSOB. And it's probably fair to answer uh, in the affirmative. We've done some testing with that, and we're continuing to, to test with that product as, as well as some others. Michael asks if the rapid shutdown requirement requires uh, the battery to be turned off. And it does not, Michael. The rapid shutdown requirement in the National Electric uh fire code um only handles the p only addresses pv uh array safety for firefighters going up onto the roof and, and trying to cut into the roof to um to uh, stop a fire from progressing inside the home and um so therefore the uh requirements end at the end of the array boundary and that's defined as the um integrated true hybrid management system like Skybox or the charge controller like the FM100 or the FM80. It simply doesn't matter uh, what sort of inverter you have after the charge controller uh, and with respect to compliance to the um, NEC 2017 or 2014. Uh, it is also important to note, Michael, that there are some jurisdictions that require, uh, upon receiving a rapid shutdown uh, initiation signal from the firefighter, that you shut down both PV and all AC in the home. And there are products like Skybox that support that. Brian asks if we have any data on which parts of Arizona are requiring NEC 2014 versus those requiring NEC 2017. And no, Brian, we don't have that level of detail. It, it seems to vary by municipality uh, and by jurisdiction. So. Um, finally, there's one last question about how to trigger a Tygo system. I'm showing an example of that here using uh, the Outback Power uh, RSI. You, you need some sort of um, initiator to be able to trigger uh, that shutdown signal and, and you know, which, which, whichever way is, is, is the most convenient way for you to install it um, is certainly going to work for that. So with that, thank you very much for your time. And uh, look forward to uh, speaking with you in the next Outback Power uh, webinar. Thank you.